From your United States Air Force Band, this is the Connection Series, a podcast that examines the intersections between the military, music, and storytelling. I am your host, Master Sergeant Brooke Emery. Hello there, listeners, and Happy New Year from your United States Air Force Band. We are so glad to be back with you in 2020. This February finds us in the midst of our Guest Artist Series. And so for the next few episodes, we are going to feature conversations with some of the artists with which we've had the good fortune to collaborate. We at the band love our Guest Artist Series. It's a chance for us to draw in a new audience and represent the Air Force to a group of folks we may not see at our other events. And this year, we kicked things off with a really special concert featuring pianist Aaron Deal. Aaron is a 33-year-old classically trained pianist who has left an indelible mark on the jazz world over the last 15 years, especially as a purveyor of early jazz and third-stream music, which synthesizes classical music and jazz. In that vein, he has most recently positioned himself as a champion of the works of George Gershwin. He's performed them with the New York Philharmonic, the Cleveland Orchestra, the Minnesota Orchestra, and the L.A. Philharmonic. And now, the Air Force Concert Band, where he was featured last month on Gershwin's Rhapsody in Blue. Our own technical sergeant, Ricky Perel, caught up with him after rehearsal to discuss his approach to music, his career, and what pushes him forward as an artist. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Ricky. (laughs) It's great to have you here. Um, Pleasure to be here. I'm Technical Sergeant Ricky Perel, and I'm a big fan of your compositions and your nuanced approach to playing as well as (laughs) uh, performing. And I just have a couple of questions for you. Sure. I know music connects people from all over the globe. How do you feel music has connected you to people from around the world? I mean, music is a universal language. I mean, no matter where you are in the world. I mean, like in, in the language of, for example, the language of jazz, which is a uniquely American art form. You know, when you play a blues, that's something that, you know, you could be in Croatia, you could be in South Africa, you can be in Japan, and uh, two people might not be able to speak the same language uh, verbally, but they can play an F blues. Mm-hmm. And that's something that's very beautiful about that. Yes, sir. Um, one of the themes that we want to touch on is storytelling sure and i'm a huge fan of your album the bespoke man's narrative mm-hmm. um Thanks. and besides the connotations with haberdashery bespoke <laughs> um to me uh as i understand it means to speak for something so what were you um trying to achieve in terms of storytelling and narrative through that album i think uh with any of the work that i do uh, whether it's my own compositions or compositions of other uh, composers, musicians, I really try to insert my own story and personality into it. And uh, you know, the beautiful thing about jazz music is you know, that you have a common language, but every person can bring their own unique individual approach uh, to the table. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, try, I try to do that in any time I perform or write. Um, I love that album. I think Warren Wolf sounds great. Oh, he's I think amazing. You sound yeah. great. Mr. Green on drums. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> I grew up with a, a strong interest in in European music. I mean, specifically, uh, Johann Sebastian Bach was like when I heard his uh, Brandenburg Concerti. I was just floored, like, wow. I mean, and you put that up against some other great composers of the time, Vivaldi, Telemann, you know, and it's kind of like this guy's on another plane. So when I was a a kid, um, you know, I performed some music, both sacred and secular. I was uh, heavily involved with. Uh, the Catholic Church uh, that I belonged to when I was a kid, and it was a predominantly African American church. So it was unique because we had the the rite of the Roman rite, of course, but in the liturgy that incorporated elements of traditional uh, Catholic Church music, but also uh, traditions that are unique to the African American experience. Uh, so and that included music as well. So it was. Uh, Really, this kind of hybrid of, of sort of traditions uh, that from from a young age I was in, involved in. Uh, my grandfather is a jazz musician. He played trombone and piano, and he also served in uh, 
actually the Air Force Band based, uh, Rickenbacker Air Force Base now. Gotcha. And uh, so he also was in the, uh, in the same uh, band as uh, Elvin Jones, Willie Ruff, Whoa. and Dwight Mitchell. And so they all knew each other. How yeah, amazing. yeah, really. Yeah. So going back to the, so, so the the military history, but my grandfather was a jazz musician, and so uh, that's how that whole uh, lineage was incorporated into my musical upbringing. And so I really try to bring a love of both, uh, you know, I don't know, European classical music and and Black American music into into my um, in my performance practice. Sounds like we have a, a very similar upbringing, you know, raised Italian Catholic, but my father's a jazz musician. All right. All right. <laughs> you know? So that's all I heard in my house growing up. You know, um, you know I want you to speak, if you could, sure. uh, about your connection uh, specifically with Gershwin's music. Okay. Um, Rhapsody in Blue, but I know yes. you also, um, you know, Porgy and Bess, you know, you, your, well, your whole uh, conception of his music and... Well, Gershwin's music, I mean, I remember my grandfather having um, a compendium of, like, American popular songs um, in his uh, library. Uh, and Gershwin's music, of course, was included a few tunes like The Man I Love or A uh, Nice Work If You Can Get It. And I was just always interested by sort of the harmonic progressions of these songs. They were very fascinating to me and also the melodies. Um, there's an album by uh, Marcus Roberts, uh, who, is, uh, uh, who is a great uh, pianist, and uh, he's interpreted many of Gershwin's works, including Rhapsody in Blue and Concerto on F. Uh, and uh, this album is called Gershwin for Lovers, and I remember hearing this when I was very young and like trying to follow along with the sheet music, but what the sheet music was indicating wasn't what he was playing with his trio and just being kind of like floored by his own arrangements and interpretations. And so I think that was probably one of my f first memorable experiences with Gershwin's music and kind of trying to expand upon it, like having Marcus Roberts as an influence. I was probably seven or eight at this time. Wow. Yeah. You were checking out heavy stuff from the beginning. Uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I, my, my parents had a good record collection. That's great. <laughs> so did mine. <laughs> um. Spoke about Bach, and, and I know you're a world class pianist. If you could have a conversation with a pianist or keyboard, you know, professional from the past, from Bach to Oscar Peterson, who would it be, and what would you ask him? <laughs> I mean, certainly Bach. I would just have to put that automatically, and I, what I would ask him was. Can you teach me counterpoint? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, then maybe I would, you know what? Maybe Jelly Roll Morton. Because if you know the Library of Congress recordings of uh, Jelly Roll that uh, Alan Lomax did in uh, the late 30s, I mean, he really gives not only a glimpse into his own music, but a, a glimpse into an, an entire... Uh, lifestyle in New Orleans and a culture. Uh, a cu culture and an oral tradition, and I could I could just listen to him talk for days, really, literally. He was a great rock on tour and storyteller, and uh, I mean, obviously a, a genius and prolific musician and composer. down on the Gulf Coast in 1904, I missed going to the St. Louis Exposition to get in a piano contest, which was won by Alfred Wilson of New Orleans.
So I know you have a new album coming out. Can you just tell us a little bit about it? Sure. The album is uh, called The Vagabond. It's on Mac Avenue Records. This will be my third album on the, the record label. It's coming out officially on February 14th, Valentine's Day. Excellent. And um, it'll feature a number of my original compositions, including um, The Vagabond, which is a title track, a uh, piece I wrote called Magnanimous Disguise, uh, and some others. But also um, a composition by Sir Roland Hanna called uh, A Story Often Told, Seldom Heard, and even something that I did uh, based on Sergei Prokofiev's March from 10 Piano Pieces. So it's a really sort of a... Uh, eclectic uh, repertoire. And then also a uh, composition by Philip Glass. I've worked with Glass for the last five years or so in uh, this etude project that he has. And uh, uh, so I'm playing uh, piano etude number 16 that I arranged for a trio. Uh, the album is featured, uh, the album features uh, uh, Paul Sakivi on the bass and uh, Gregory Hutchinson on the drums. Check it out. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Pleasure to be here. Connection series is produced by myself along with Senior Master Sergeant Matthew Irish. Additional audio assistance was provided by Chief Master Sergeant Dennis Hoffman and Master Sergeants Jim Devon and Mike Hamp. The executive producer of the Connection series is Colonel Don Schofield.